Welcome to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green, where you'll discover actionable strategies to help your student to reach their academic goals, to excel at standardized testing, and to plan for the college admissions process painlessly. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Green. Right, you know what that music means, folks. It is time for the Make the Grade podcast. Welcome, welcome, my audience, welcome, my listeners, welcome, my supporters. Dr. Stephen Green here. I got a fantastic guest today. Fantastic guest. I always get pumped up about my guests, but every once in a while, you meet somebody who's just got a really, really good energy. I think they're going to bring a huge amount of value to the table. So perk up. And all the way from the wilds of Montreal, Canada, my new buddy, Natan, oh boy, I'm going to butcher his last name, Verkovsky. Thank you, Dr. Green. How are you, sir? I'm awesome, man. I'm doing really well. But Natan, thank you very much. I had the honor, pleasure of having about a 45-minute sort of pre-show convo with Natan. And I got to tell you, I was, I was excited. This guy's got a fantastic story, stories. He's living, he's walking the walk. Um, and he's just got some really cool things going on, but really more importantly, because the theme of this show, the theme of this podcast is to give you actionable things you can take with you to accelerate your journey to success. That's what I want. I think you're going to get a lot of that in the next 20, 30 minutes. So get your pencil sharpened, sit down, listen, pay attention if you're driving, whatever. The time, let's start with this. Okay. You have created a, 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 a resource center, a school, whatever, called the Essential Academy. Sure. Right? Um, tell us about that. Let's start with that. Now, I think we're going to back into some of the other things that you can deliver. Like what's, what's this about, Essential Academy? So the essentialacademy.org, and I say that because we focus on that compared to a lot of dot-coms and a lot of self-serving. I'm selling some stuff. If you want to come buy some stuff and give me 20 bucks and download a PDF, or worse, give me <laughs> 2,000 bucks and download a bunch of PDFs, and a bunch of videos and a bunch of stuff. And let's pretend either one of those is learning or any one mm. of those is actual education. Those are informational. They're not transformational. So step one, nice. we wanted to ensure that we were on a place and a platform that was a learning management system, a proper LMS that uh, university of, you know, whatever city you're in their online presence, it would be built on this. It's not a click funnel. It's not a, a Kajabi membership community it's focused on giving you in mail it's focused on letting you connect with the hundreds or thousands of other people in that community and like follow and share it's focused on letting mm. you create and develop courses put on events make collaborations do the things that normally you don't get to do because you think you're an army of one and you haven't joined any type of a community so in that capacity, before I make it sound too exciting, it is invitation only by referral only. It is a private hmm. community. It is geared towards those of us that are already at nine out of 10 in our life, personally and professionally. It's meant for them to be able to have a place to give back, but at the same time, still be supported. So for me, I come from a background over 40 years in the martial arts. You look at my LinkedIn or Facebook, I'm there with a sword. <laughs> so yes, I'm, yes, I'm, yes, he is. <laughs> I'm there to guide. It's I've a, seen it. I'm fiercely guard the community. I make this a, a sacred place for transformation that those that have education, experience, and expertise, those that want to give back and want to have a bright dot org light shined on them, this mm. is where that invitation comes from. This is that community to go join. So in that, that is where we're coming from. And that definitely didn't, you know, happen overnight or, or just come out because we wanted to just join the world and do wonderful things. I was extraordinarily frustrated making my transition online hmm. where I was coming from for 24 years. I'd been an energy coach and a medical hypnotherapist and licensed and blessed enough to work with my dad, who was a head coach at Cirque du Soleil for 29 years and director of design and performance. So I'm working with these Olympic gymnasts and acrobats and athletes. And for myself, besides martial arts, I'd come when I was 15, 16, I was the U S equivalent of all state in power tumbling. So I was focused on that. And, you know, you get the pat on the head like, oh, that's adorable. You were nationally ranked. I'm an Olympic gold medal winning athlete. Hmm. Mm. So the, the qualifications and the quantifications of scale played in beautifully. 
And because mm. I was blessed enough not to have a lot of ego back then in my 20s, <laughs> I was able to take notes. And when I go drinking with Team Japan and Russia and France, and I'm coming in going, there's so much ego. It's 7, 8 o'clock the next morning. We haven't stopped drinking. And I know that, oh my God, I just screwed up. You guys, there's an event. Like, we're competing in half an hour. I don't know how we got our days screwed up, but oh my God, we're energetically at a 2 out of 10. We need to get to a 7 or 8 out of 10 real quick. Don't tell me there's a pep talk. Don't tell me there's some, you know, motivational thing your coach is going to tell you. Mm. They're like, oh, well, no, we, we have mental, physical, and emotional drills that change our activation levels and bring us up, down, or neutralize our energy. Usually wow. within five minutes at our own control and will. And that's what I busy was taking notes. That was my first uh, best-selling book, <laughs> Personal Momentum, Secrets of Self-Transformation. Yes, for, the, for those of you listening, he's holding up the book. Personal momentum. And of course, I apologize as a podcast. You can't see that That's clearly. Okay. Well, we, 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 can, we can do some visual stuff. A right, couple of things here. A <laughs> couple of things. You've used the word two or three times, transformation, right? Mm. Transformational. So I, obviously that's important to you. Uh, d define that. D like oh, I, I, I know what the dictionary would say, but in no, your no, mind, no, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to call my bluff, Doctor Green, and I. No, I'm not. I'm not. I, I, I want. I want to know what you. When consider people good. say that your your platform, your program, your community, your concept, that everything that you're saying, if you're saying that we believe that education must be transformational and not just informational, that's mm -hmm. catchy and that's cute. Tell me like what it. that means, and I don't want you to tell me what that means in any number of words. I want you to do it in one. Mm -hmm. Transformative me? automatically has to be interactive. Mm. The secret to our success is the ability to create courses, programs, events, co-launching books, co-launching courses, co-launching events, where everybody has the ability the capacity to take their course to such an interactive level where there's quizzes and exams and they can get a certificate of um, completion versus a, versus a certification where they can come inside and the instructor decides what's a passing grade is it 85 percent is it just watch all my videos so you get to get notified of video assignments, written assignments, quizzes, exams. You get notified and act like a proper instructor. Those of us that, unlike you, Dr. Green, don't come from a pedagogic background, mm -hmm. but understand that we don't want to fake it till we make it. We want to act as if. And in that capacity, there are many, many examples of what properly standing in that truth and acting as if you were a proper online institution would look like. So I was blessed enough to create an advisory board <laughs> with people way older, smarter, and more experienced than me that would be able to give from that classical university, classical pedagogic educational background to ensure that we're in line with that, that we support our people internally, that we help promote the crap out of our people externally. Because it's different when you're, when you're looking at coming online. And if we were to look at it, let's forget the martial art analogy, look at the education analogy. Bachelor's, master's, PhD. Okay, what's a bachelor's coming online look like? I've made a course, I've written a book, I've been on a stage, I've been interviewed on a podcast, I've done a summit, I have made some money. I have proven the methodology and concept. I currently have a system. Chances are I've probably made about a couple thousand dollars. Great, welcome to bachelor's. Because trust me, as Sad as you think that is, <laughs> that is well, epic. There are people that would go, yeah, holy crap, I'd give my left arm yeah, for that. that. That isn't as easy as it sounds, actually, and, but oh, yeah. But that's what it looks like on the back end. In mm -hmm. the same way that, oh, you got an Academy Award. So you were just cast in a really good movie with a really good cast and a really good script and a really good director. Oh, and you just happen to be a really good actress. Yeah, no kidding. All those stars had to line <laughs> up, right? So where we look at it and go, well, then what's the difference for my master's? Hmm. Masters means that you've actually created automation. You've now scaled and added systems. You've now increased and added staff. So you've taken it off your plate. You're not an army of one. You're no longer best efforts. You're into best practices. Congratulations. And so now you're putting on evergreen webinars and funnels. Now you're putting on events. Now you're sponsoring things. Now you're corporately getting your name and brand out. Now you're putting on the damn podcast that you want other people to come to, which is the quickest, easiest way to get them to come to your podcast and be like, hey, can I get you to come to my podcast? 
What do you think the first thing they're going to say is? Oh, well, of course, obviously I have to reciprocate. I also have a podcast. Gee, I didn't know. And magically, Natana, I'd like you to be on mine. And it happens to be very... It's, it's, a, it's actually a very effective strategy. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> so you get to that point. You also have to be clear because this is where the intangible comes in. And we very clearly understand the difference between, you know, pay the rent, pay the mortgage to be an online presence. Because if you fail to do that and fill up that bucket, you'll go get a job. Welcome to being kicked out versus status and the status mm. bucket that a lot of people spend all their time and effort filling helps you look better sound better makes you that best-selling author puts you on that podcast gives you that community lets you stand on that stage puts you in that audience gets that spotlight on you and so many people get caught up in that beautiful shiny light they forget to pay the damn rent mm. and that's where more online entrepreneurs starting get messed up well, crap, I need a podcast and I need a book and I need this and I need a webinar and I need a funnel and I, ah, and I don't know where to start and I don't know what to do. Yeah, and then, then, they, then they do nothing because they are afraid to do overwhelmed. anything. Overwhelmed. You get yeah. it. Overwhelmed mind does nothing. Mm -hmm. And worse than that, they also get caught up in process. So they're so focused on how to create this and the people who created whatever magical system they created, they love that process because that's their secret sauce. <laughs> that to them is like, hey man, you get to do this and this and this and it's amazing because it works and da 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 da, da. And the people listening to that go, oh crap, I hear, I have to do this and this and this. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and it sounds like extra work. No matter how we look at it, if it's not phrased and framed properly, it's not going to come across as a woohoo, irresistible offer. I can't wait to jump on that. Let me ask you a couple quick questions, please. Because I'm thinking, okay, I'm 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 kind of I'm like a high school graduate to use your bachelor's master's kind of metaphor. Okay. I'm thinking, okay, I I, I want to do this. I want to be an online marketer. I want to be an entrepreneur. Okay. So we almost have to take a almost like a pre stage of even some of the things that are coming on here. So some of the things I hear people say, well, because because here's a trap people fall into is 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 they do something just because they like it like oh i like baseball cards so i want to start a business selling baseball cards just, just for example or i like um i don't know um, 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 i think i'm good at all my friends come to me when they have problems so i'm going to become a life coach and get paid to listen to people's problems help them solve them and i'm, yeah. I'm over so i'm not trying to make fun of life coaches no, no, but, but it's fair it's fair it, it is sometimes for sure so uh, how important I, I get totally agree with what you're talking about. I, I mean, doing a lot of stuff myself and I definitely have room to improve. There's no question about it, but would you give any counsel to someone in terms of choosing a vertical that they would want to be in or choosing maybe, a, 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 a niche within the vast things that people could sell? The answer I usually get people is, well, do something you're passionate about, right? Sure. If, uh, you know, if, if you enjoy what you do, it's not work, you know, there's a lot of cliches and there's truth sure. to all of them. Right. But at some point you got to be marketable, right? Yes. Adding a little value to what you added and just tweaking it a little bit, I think would be the difference. So okay. if we're looking at somebody who wants to come online and wants to monetize their value and their knowledge, there's no one I know of that doesn't have at least 10 different hats they wear. And is this, that, and the other thing, and is probably really impressive and gifted in certain areas of this, that, or the other. So one of it has to be like you said, I have to like this because I have to talk about whatever the heck this is a lot. <laughs> like if I didn't want to be an energy coach, mm -hmm. this wouldn't work because I do this all day, every day. So that wouldn't work, whether it's to my private clients, whether it's to my instructors, the first thing I gift them is my thousand dollar energy course. I want them to know, hey, it's my life's work. So here, if any of this can help you, these are 23 mental, physical, and emotional drills that elite athletes and peak performers around the world use. Maybe this can help you with your energy levels. We all need help with that. I will be the first to admit. But then secondly, in case you've never made a $1,000 pre-recorded online course, this is the template and what that looks like, right? So, so many different ways to utilize that because you need to always be looking at both sides of that coin. Right, 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 right. right. You can't just pay the rent and not have a damn clue how it happened. And you can't just keep filling up the status bucket and make yourself so impressive, so impressive. I got people that literally wrote the book on how to make money online. And I'm like, hey, there's a course I got. It's 500 bucks a month. They're like, it's a tough time right now. I'm like, but you wrote the book on making money, man. Come on now. That's not right. But so, it's always a chicken and egg because you have to have a product to sell and you can't right. sell if you don't have a product or at hmm. least some deliverable, right? Well, that's where I wanted to 
to tell you about that. So if somebody's okay. coming online and looking at creating that, the biggest problem that they're looking at is they don't know where to start. And yes, you need to, like we said, passionate about it. I like it. I don't mind spending 12 hours a day doing it. Cool. Congrats. Like mm -hmm. there's that great uh, quote that's like, oh, you work 40 hours a week. That's cute. I remember my first part-time job. So where that's we're, a joke they make about entrepreneurs. Yes. <laughs> and if you want to come into that, if, if you, if, if that makes you grimace or if your stomach goes, Ooh, I'm not sure. Then it's a lot of work. Are. That's a lot of hours. Right. Because yeah. realistically, at least if you work 40 hours a week for somebody else, unless you know, the business goes under, they get bought, they get sold. This happens, this happens, this happens, and this happens. Chances are you get paid. But you know what the funny thing is? We have all the same crap online. And all the same, uh-oh, what if this happens or this happens or, you know, 20 people paid for my webinar, but damn it, Zoom won't open. What do I do? Yeah, we all have the same crazy crap that happens online as well. And the same fears and the same concerns. The mm. difference is if you can establish yourself online in a proven, repeatable format, and we're not talking about create a school or teach this to others or follow that model of, of making money online. We're talking about just for you personally, privately. Like at my academy, we're looking at people with, you know, everyone's an MBA, PhD, everyone's got experience, education, expertise, but there's people that are there that aren't focused on that education part. It's their expertise that goes, holy crap, because one of them is a simple example. I won't mention names, so we won't embarrass anybody. He comes from making online courses, small, simple, quick. Remember when we talked about, uh, you know, give me 20 bucks and download a PDF from Kajabi, that's not learning. He's old school and comes from that. So he's from ClickBank. He made a course that's, um, I believe it was. Uh, ClickBank, by, for those of you who don't know, is a, uh, a site that, sell, that a person could host things, uh, a course they made or something. And then they, that's the platform you could use to sell it on. And a wonderful place to become an affiliate yeah. and sell a yeah. bunch of other people's and keep track of what mm -hmm. that looks like so that you don't even. And same for Kajabi. Kajabi is a similar program, but uh, more multi-dimensional because also has marketing tools and blah 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 right. but you're looking you know, at that's that's what Natasha membership talking. concept exactly yeah. mm -hmm. so where we would be oh goodness now i got all excited about that <laughs> could you back me up five seconds we, we were talking about the guy who had the courses on clickbank ah so for him he made it clear his course was i believe 47 dollars, and the mm -hmm. difference was he sold it twenty-seven thousand times well, it's not bad numbers he didn't have a website. He didn't have a following. He didn't have a LinkedIn, Facebook. He didn't post. He didn't advertise. He did none of the classical things. Yet he literally made over a million dollars and then came to a different place. So mm. knowing that that level of expertise exists out there, A, gives all of us hope, but B, lets us know that, you know, at the end of it, you could do it for yourself and be selfish and enjoy. But at the same time, you could also come and show and teach and share with others. They would be more than willing to. Where a lot of people don't remember or don't understand is that where you are right now is always in the middle. There are categorically people that are three, four steps ahead of you that you'd look at and go, oh my God, you guys are incredible. I, I would do anything to be a part of you. And if you reach up to them and expect them to reach down and pull you up, that's a lot harder and a lot slower then you acknowledging that you're also in the middle. And if you look to the left and if you look down. Yeah, it's always going to be right, right. No, oh that's God, a people that are three, four excellent steps, perspective. They're going to be like, I would give my left arm to be you, Dr. Green. You tell me you don't have a huge online presence. You're telling me you don't know what you're doing. I'm in your podcast. What are you talking about? You're doing amazing. Yeah, it's, 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 you, know, you know you've arrived when Natan is on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, but listen, listen. One of the, look, this is the Make the Great Podcast. Our goal is to give people actions to help yes. them succeed, right? Yes. Um, I mean, look, you're, uh, you're at the PhD level, so to speak. I'm probably somewhere around the master's level. Um, what, what I want to do is make sure people understand this is accessible. Yeah. This is not some voodoo that only 10 people in the whole world know. This is something that's attainable. It's learnable. It's teachable. It's logical. If you can get with the right mentors mm. and you're willing to put the work in. And I want to say that twice. That's and right. you're willing to put the work in. Nothing the time mentioned cannot be done without some hard, consistent work. Now, you can mitigate that by automating some of the processes, and you can mitigate it by having really good quality in terms of your marketing. Yes. Because people aren't going to, if you have terrible copy, you know, if your ad is like, hey, buy this, nobody's going to buy it anyway. So there are some technicals and there's some T's you got to cross. Well, there's also the internal that if heaven forbid the actual content of what you're giving 
has well, no practical well, value. Right. You got refunds yeah. coming out the wazoo. So yeah. Look, I got. I, I, again, I'm not. I'm going to use an example, and I want to mention these. I, there's a, a woman I worked with who wanted to create a course. She she is a meditative coach. Teach okay. people how to meditate, and she plays the harp. And she actually plays beautifully. It's it's a really nice, relaxing sound. But it's like people say, well, why should I pay you to learn how to meditate while you play the harp? When I can go on 4,000 websites or YouTube or whatever and just search harp music to meditate by, and it's there for free. So I said to her, you must have a differentiator. You have to find something that gets you above the noise, that gets you beyond the 300 other places people get it for free. Right. And more importantly, build some loyalty and some community from the people that follow you. Because people are very fickle. Yes. As soon as something comes on, it's five dollars less, or they got another yeah. option, or they shiny just... light syndrome and all that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Shiny object, all that jazz. So you need a differentiator. Now, fortunately, she was able to find one, but that's what something people some... what she what she started doing, she created like a club. She basically created a community. She created like a social that. community, a little bit like what you're doing, sort of. Um, where and 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 a lot of this was on my advisement. So I felt kind of happy I actually gave her good Thank advice because this is a space. I don't necessarily have an expertise in, but every, what she did was she create she had questions like a prompt. So, so people do this with journaling, right? So it's like, okay, today write about, I don't know, um, your favorite vacation when you were a kid or your favorite memory or something a little, but she started doing with the meditation. Now, again, it wasn't unique. It was not an idea that hasn't been done, but the combination mm-hmm. of this, a little bit of a guided stuff, the harp, her getting a lot stronger in technology because she uh, wasn't from that generation that grew up with tech. And um, it, it's working out. Now, she's not, you know, cashing seven figure checks, but she's created a sustainable business that's paying the rent. And she's okay. able to now grow on it at a pace that she's comfortable with. And I think that was even that is a success story here. 100%. Let me let me shift gears a tiny bit because you said some really cool things. Okay. Did you, you have a really cool personal background and you get into as much as you want, but so your father worked for Cirque du Soleil, right? Yes. Still does. Still does. Cool. I mean, so I, I think of Cirque, I think of like, you know, acrobats spinning around, on, yes. on, you know, and flying over things, stuff I would probably break my neck if I even yes. thought about doing. <laughs> um, and, and these are elite, elite world-class people, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a tremendous, I've seen these shows in Las Vegas and, in to Orlando, audition, you better have an Olympic gold medal in gymnastics or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how is that being growing up in that environment? Obviously, it had an impact on you not only because you met a lot of people, but I think it shaped your, um, you know, kind of your drive a little bit. But what, what just on a personal level, what, what, what's the coolest thing about that? Like that sort of starstruck thing for me, like because I, whenever I see somebody who, I, whenever I see somebody who does things, I know I cannot do. Right. Like I'm five, seven, I can't dunk a basketball. So, you know, whenever I see somebody dunk a basketball, like, like, like they're throwing it in the trash can, I'm like, Oh my gosh. That's okay. So when I see people running and tumbling and spinning and doing backflips and, and all catching that. each other off of trapezes, I'm like, yep. you know, I'm not even going to think about attempting that. So that I have a lot of respect for this, but how did that, you think that really shaped you know, your motivation and, and, you know, how you kind of came up through that and your ability to relate to these people. Cause one thing you did say, and I'm sorry for going on here is no when you get people with an attitude, right? Like I got a gold medal, right? Mm-hmm. What am I going to learn from the son of my coach? Right. Like sometimes the people get an attitude about that. Like, what can oh, you teach me? That right? is a blessing. When you go to a Cirque du Soleil audition and you happen to have an Olympic gold medal in gymnastics. Wonderful. Mm. The first thing they get you to do is to empty your cup and humble up. And okay. the best way they can do that is to just ask you. That's pretty amazing. You can do a triple twisting, triple backflip. That's awesome. You're one of seven people on earth that can. Great. <laughs> so do you know how to put on stage makeup? Do you know how to work in a troupe? Do you understand when your timing and act needs to come in? Do you have theatrics? Do you know mm. how to work the group dynamics? You don't? So when it's time for you to do your triple twisting backflip there, little buddy, we'll call you. In the meantime, <laughs> empty your cup, humble up. And learn to put your own stage makeup on. Learn to become a completely different person because you're no longer an acrobat. You're now an artist. 
Mm. And to be able to do that at all given stages, you don't get to your master's degree if you can't humble up and understand that you passed your bachelor's and vice versa. In our initial analogy when we started, somebody at their master's degree, oh my God, I've got systems, I've got teams, I've got da-da-da and automation, that's great. So quantitatively, great. You're now at the five to $15,000 a month level. You're doing good. If you're not a freaking engineer or somebody who went to school for 20 years, you're making great money compared to the outside mm-hmm. world. Bravo to you, and you can only grow from there. What hmm. does a PhD look like? Yeah, let's talk about that. Well, it means that you're doing everything we just said well. You're no longer freaking out and trying to make your teams, establish your teams, standardized operating procedures. You're no longer trying to go from best efforts to best practices. You're trying to fine tune which best practices uniquely define you and your core messaging, where your signature talk on any stage in no longer way, shape, or form has anything to do with you. If I did my signature talk correctly, you should resonate with my story so Mm -hmm. much to go, holy crap, that's not his story, that's my story, if I did my job right. Otherwise, I'm a self-glorifying, self-serving guy who's trying to sell you some crap. (laughs) Woohoo! And you'll be able to resonate very clearly with that which doesn't sound like that compared to that which sounds like everybody else and everything else, which is always that self-serving note. Because they're coming from a vibrational frequency, if I speak as an energy coach for a minute, they're coming from a vibrational frequency of deficit. They're not coming from frequency of, of abundance. They're not vibrating at a frequency of, I'm good, life is good, I've paid the rent, I'm not worried about these basic you know, food, shelter, clothing things. I'm here to see who I can help, how I can help. They're coming from a vibrational frequency of, you know what? I've already touched tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. How do I touch millions? What's Mm. missing to make me go to that next level? And that's where they get really, really fine note and granular. And they make those massive events that do massive good for massive people. And that's what usually pushes them over that next PhD level. So it's partly scale, partly growth to be able to handle that type of delivery in sort of an intellectual way and a energetic way and then sustainability and that's right you can't fluke out on this nobody falls on top of the freaking mountain you it doesn't work that way success (laughs) is going to leave some footprints so you have to grow slowly when i was working with um one of my team that does the um the youtube and the facebook ads and all the paid advertising and for us, because we're an invitation only by referral only community, paid advertising is for courses. It's never for instructors. We don't advertise for that. So when we were looking at creating some of these courses and, and ways to go out and, and get that out there, we're constantly looking for ways to go, what's an automated system? What's the proper funnel? What are best practices right now? And there's no need to reinvent the wheel. You just go out, follow those, replicate those. And it's about getting those best people, those best practices in place. That's the key that as soon as you stumble upon something that works, and this is not how I came online. I wasn't blessed. I was blessed in an out, uh, you know, offline. No worries. You know, I was blessed enough that my dad happened to be a big deal. So I remember when I'm in my 20s and I'm an energy coach and a medical hypnotherapist and I'm working with thousands of people already. And the National Coaching Certification Program, a coaching program for Canada that doesn't matter what your background is, you can be an Olympic national level coach for any sport as long Hmm. as you follow these training principles and these pedagogic ways to learning path. In that capacity, I'm a 25, 26-year-old kid, and I got these people that are our age now looking at me with my arms crossed going, who are you? In order to be teaching at level four or five NCCP, National Coaching Certification Program, it's theoretical only. You need to have at least two kids on a national coaching program that are currently at the national level going off to worlds, Olympics, et cetera. If not, don't worry about it, man. This isn't, you don't need to bother yourself with this level. This is pushing the envelope top, top, theoretical only. If you still need to work your fundamentals and your basics, go to level one, two, and three, get that right. But at level four and five, so you, got two kids on a national coaching program you're coming to this area you're crossing your arms on your chest looking at me going hold on why am i listening to this kid he's like a kid and he's not an olympic athlete and he doesn't have two kids that are olympic athletes what the heck is going on hey relax his dad's boris verhofsky oh crap all right fine that buys you two minutes 
And if you can't, like that kept the door open, if you can't justify and validate your presence there, you get booted out real quick. So we were blessed enough to have this lady that was on the national team with us. And we got to put into principle immediately mental, physical, emotional exercises, visualizations, ways that she could go inner, first person, inner body visualization, seeing it through her own eyes so that she can fine tune that compared to outer body, third person, disassociative, where she all of a sudden goes, oh, I can see it's like a drone flying over me. Holy crap, I never knew that my ankle was bent or that my head was off to an angle. Mm. And so the ability to fine tune that on an inner and outer level is what gives such clarity usually to very, very high peak performers that are already examining that replay tape and watching to see their mistakes and looking to try to get that one iota better. We play with people already at nine out of 10, personally and professionally. They're looking to get a little bit better. Well, you're dealing with a population where there's such a small margin of error yes. Yes. between complete success and at their level, failure. Yes. You know, when, you, when you're at an international competition, I mean, I don't know, whatever, a thousandth of a point in gymnastics, sometimes it's the difference between first and eighth. Yes. Plus the physical skills it takes, the concentration it takes to be able to sustain that over a whole competition. Yeah. So clearly there's a huge amount of mental uh, focus that has to be required. And none of this comes overnight. All of this is a sustained mm -hmm. long-term, this is a marathon, this is not a sprint. So I remember <clears throat> pre-COVID, Let's let's date this uh, interview <laughs> at that point. Yes. And I remember I was oh, it's both, medium post now. Medium now. <laughs> I yeah. remember pre Mid. I was back in accountability looking at what do I need to do in 2019 to what's the most needed area of growth in myself personally and professionally. And that was accountability. And what was the identity shift that I personally needed to make? I needed to become someone who identified and became accountable to success. If you're not accountable to success, you will not become successful. It is a mistress. It is demanding. It is something that is calculated and methodical. And there are many, many roads to get there. And all roads lead to Rome. And it doesn't matter which one you pick as long as you stick to that. So the third but point on that was, are you giving it your all? Are you utilizing the tools and the rules of accountability? Yeah, this is really, really true and really good stuff. Can you do one last thing here? Mm -hmm. uh, and you kind of already did this, but let's do it in sort of a summary way. Sure. Can, can you just kind of sum up, in your opinion, and I'm going to go way deeper in this, but if you can do it in like a minute or two, yeah, um, you know, what is the secret to success? Somebody's out there going, oh, my God, this is the time, and he threw so much at me. And it's all good. I, I mean, I'm, I'm taking all kinds of notes here. I, this is great. Thank you. Dr. But for somebody who's going, okay, okay. Can you just really make it easy for me if it's possible? Um, what's the distillation of this? What are the core things? Obviously everyone's going to have, you know, a lot more to it, but a couple core things people really need to do to, to assuming they want to strive for some kind of success. If you're looking at making the transition coming online, Mm -hmm. okay. The most important thing is uh, mindset. Mindset number one. If you're coming from a worker mindset and you have not yet acknowledged that every hour that you work, you either work for someone else or you work for yourself. This is binary. Mm -hmm. There are no other choices. You either make money for others or you make money for yourself. You put money in the status bucket for someone else or you put it for yourself. That is all. Once you choose to acknowledge that and go, you know what, offline, there's a million reasons that my employment could end that has nothing to do with my quality or my experience or expertise or how good I am at doing my darn job completely outside my control. And online, heck yeah, those exist as well. I'm so sorry that you're still a child and didn't understand that nobody gets out of this life alive. Let me be the first to let you know. So this will end badly for all of us, <laughs> if you'd like to look at it that way. This will end beautifully for all of us, if you'd like to look at it that way. Along the transitional journey, I can share with you my own personal daily checklist. The first thing is to pray, to give gratitude, because gratitude is abundance. Abundance is gratitude. You wake up, congratulations, seven other million people around the world this morning did not. 
So let's give praise for everything. Let's literally count our blessings. I'm here, I can see, I touch my body parts, they didn't fall off. I'm not numb, I'm not immune. Everything currently works. Holy crap, there's another 12 million people that that's not the case for today. That's a bad day for those people. Now that we've prayed and given gratitude, let's start with number one. Millionaire mindset affirmations. Does that mean you gotta grab a piece of paper and say, I make $3 million a year, every year, happily? And you gotta write that out like you were doing homework notes uh, back in like junior high school because you got in <laughs> trouble with the teacher. I will not teacher. talk during class. I will not <laughs> talk, yeah. <laughs> but instead, I will make $7 million this year. I will make $7 million. And you've got hundreds of pieces of paper with hundreds of lines on those pieces of paper so that you have hypnotized yourself to believe that yourself. Because if you don't believe it, how the hell am I? If you can't see your hairs stand up on end when you speak, then you're not resonating, then you're not standing in your truth. And if you're not going to speak to that capacity and you can't even turn yourself on, how the hell are you gonna turn anyone else on? So we get to point number two, motivational video of the day. Oh, I'm motivated as crap. Yeah, yeah, we all are, buddy. But like a haircut and bathing, these things wan. So if you'd like to get more, you need it on a daily dosage, the same way that you need to make your bed on a daily basis and brush your teeth on a daily basis. Motivational video of the day. Three, for me, lifelong martial artist, some sort of martial art practice. Movement, move your body. Move it in a forced, focused, and formative way that at the end lets you feel like, hey, the more I sweat in practice, the less I bleed in battle. This is significant, this is important. This isn't just movement for fun. I'm not just doing jazzercise. I need to do something that'll make me feel cool, whatever that means to you. Four. Help somebody else do something they need. Five, make money and or advance the cause. Six, make your family better to each other. Seven, learn something new every day. And lastly, eight, do something to unwind, relax, and be calm including not be a damn perfectionist and try to make this stupid list go to 10. Be happy that it stops at eight and quit it. Just quit it. It's very powerful stuff here. This is awesome, man. I really appreciate you taking some time here today. Well, is pleasure. there anything you want to plug? Like you got a website, you got a contact information you want to share with the, well, for with sure. the you, audience? You feel that you're at the level that you've got that, you know, education, experience, expertise, and you'd like to take a look at joining us. If you're at that at least first degree black belt, we'd invite you to come teach with us. If you're not, we'd invite you to come take a course with us and get to that level. There's no reason that we can't help everybody elevate and come on up. And this is uh, essentialacademy.org. Yep. So you go to www.essentialacademy.org and you'll see exactly who we are. Click on our team, click on events, click on courses, see where it resonates with you to play. At the same time, I'm blessed enough in a couple <laughs> a couple days at this point. <laughs> in about a week, I've got my birthday coming up. And my mom, who was born on the 29th, and, excuse me, on the 31st. And I'm born on February 2nd, Groundhog Day. And so she goes into labor on her birthday. <laughs> and I'm born two days later. So we've been celebrating our birthday together for decades. If you're interested, if you're in the mood to come and have some fun, I'm combining a double birthday bash with my new book launch, Moments oh. of Power, Quotes from the Wall of Wisdom. Because wow. my wife forced me to sit back and say, hey, this is December and damn it, you're going to take a break. No more making stuff, no more doing stuff. Stop it. Just chill out for a couple of weeks. Okay, but that drove me nuts, so I wrote a book. And in that book, I looked up at my wall and I noticed there's snippets and clippets and you know little post-it notes that I'm showing right now to the camera. Tolerance of failure, he just held up, yes. And so tolerance of failure is the ability to know how far you're going to get in terms of success. Your tolerance to failure clearly dictates literally how wealthy you'll be. Mm. If your thick skin doesn't mean that you can go through this multiple times, painfully, 
this isn't for you, man. And that's okay. Yeah. The entrepreneur journey is not always easy, but it can be very, very rewarding, My goodness. but there's smart ways to do it. And there's not so smart ways to do it. Yes. And some of that, and I know this is being around the right people, getting the right mentorship. Yes. And being able to impact people in a way. And I think I forget exactly how you said it, but uh, that they're relating it, what you're saying in their own world, not the way it related your signature to signature story becomes their signature, their signature story. story. Yeah. That, that is, that's a, I, I really the, a perfect way to say it. I was trying to think of a way to say it my own way, but it's really, Don, thank you so much. I, uh, I, you know, this is awesome, man. You, you are a wealth of info. I am going to check out the essential academy. Thank you, sir. Because, I, I don't know if I can cut the mustard. I don't know if I'm essential. Ah, you're in there, Dr. Green. Yet. You're in. And, I and think I am, but I don't know, man. I, I, I got I got not up. just the background of the people coming in. It's are you at that big brother's big sister's? Yeah, I got I got up my game here. I got I got to make it. Can you give here. back? Are you at a level where you're like, hey? Well, that I'm, that I'm good at, but uh, okay. So there's where the funny part is because here you are auditioning for Cirque du Soleil, saying I'm super wicked awesome and I'm you know this MBA and black belt and PhD and this and that. And I'm like, great. This is going to be the most terrifying part of you. That's not the hard mm. part. That was the easy part. You're already qualified to be here. I wouldn't be talking to you. Mm. The hard part comes, can you humble up and empty up? Can you open the kimono? Can you realize that we can't get into bed together and keep our underwear on? What the hell are we going to make? Are you vulnerable and transparent enough to say, I'm really, really, really good at this. Literally got a doctorate in this. However, I'm not super wicked awesome at this. I, I would love to have some help, some strength, some support in this area. And I'm open and vulnerable enough to say that. Those are the people we're looking for. There you go. We can help. Beautiful. Awesome. Hey, let's, uh, let's wrap it up with something Thank real you, quick sir. if you have time. You got three more minutes? I do. And I'm, as usual, I know you got to run another run. wonderful event. Run. You're going to go write another book here. Me, I do you too. <laughs> hey, I, uh, I asked my guests, we're going, to do, we're going to play a quick game. I call it the fave five. Okay. okay. This is, this is all, this is, this is no, uh, nothing. There's just no, no mindset. strings attached. I get you. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to say something. You tell me your favorite thing in this category. Okay. okay? So I have an easy one. Color. Red. Red. That's a good one. Okay. It's a good vibrational color. Place to vacation. Bali. Nice. He's a warm weather guy like me. I'm glad you didn't say like Northern Alberta or something. <laughs> Which is, I'm from Calgary, Alberta, right? So yeah, right. besides being born in Russia, I grew up in Calgary. Yeah, like, you, you've snow, had snow. more than three You're lifetimes. You're in Montreal worth of, going snow. God damn, have I not learned anything? <laughs> three lifetimes worth of cold weather already. Have I got nothing from this? <laughs> this will be an interesting one because of your background. Food. You have one? A Tom Young soup that I make from scratch. Really? Mm. Tom Young soup. Nice. Yeah. What's what's the main ingredient in that? Ooh. Like an Oriental. It sounds Oriental. It is, it is, it is. So you're you're getting into um you're getting into like Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia. You're getting into that Southeast Asia flavor. So you've got gangle, which is like a pine nut ginger mm. you've got ginger you've got garlic you've got you're taking the shells from shrimp and boiling them to make a shrimp stock wow. you're adding garlic and onions and limes and just making this spicy sour ridiculous and then you're adding coconut milk and it is just a flavored layer of ridiculousness on your mouth i guarantee you the first person that said that <laughs> I've, I've gotten cheesesteaks i've gotten ice cream all right <laughs> We get more exotic up here, Dr. Green. <laughs> Here's the next one. Music. Mm. Like one song I'd have to hear for the rest of my life. Ah, ah, you can band, you style, genre. I don't know. You can interpret as you will. I play blues harmonica. I've loved mm -hmm. that. I'm a classically trained concert pianist. Really? I play djembe hand drums and have uh, an album that I recorded. So I play multiple instruments in multiple ways. I look at it as an expression. I look at woodworking that I do. I look at being a ceramicist and creating clay. I look at being a martial artist and movement. I look at now training with people behind me to learn how to use my voice as yet another instrument and mm. become a vocalist. I just look at ways that we as human beings can become human expressionists. 
bucket list. And you've done so many things. Do you even have a bucket left? Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Dan has accomplished a lot. You are a Renaissance, a Renaissance person here. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, and I will anything on left on the bucket list you want to share in a time. There's so, so much I would love to. And it's just <laughs> of all the things you're like, wow, this guy's really like above and beyond, you know, materialistic things or things about his ego and stuff. I'm like, I don't know, man. I would love, I would love to meet the Dalai Lama. You know what I mean? Wow. I would love these levels of acknowledgement that only come from being at the highest pinnacle and we pay lip service to them and they don't mean, you know, air quotation marks. They don't mean anything. Hmm. But damn, if they don't feel that, you know, you got the status bucket, you got the pay the rent bucket, and then there's this like soul quenching bucket. And there's certain things like being a best selling author. There's certain things like coming across and going on a podcast where 4 million people uh, download that every month and you're in the top 1%. There's things like being a keynote speaker at this place. There's things like putting on your own event and having thousands of dollars raised towards a charity or cause. There's so many ways that you can just feel great about yourself and what you do. You just have to quantify and qualify and balance that with paying the damn rent. <laughs> or you're gonna have to go back and get a job real that's quick. The, that's the one little detail sometimes. Yes. Yeah. So All right, here's the last. Can trip you up. <laughs> oh, no, this is, I, I love it, man. Last one, what's your favorite podcast? Oh, that would be this one. That one's easy. There you go. There you go. That's, there you go. Hands are up in Very the air. Very short so answer on that one. I like it. <laughs> Dr. Tom, thanks again. Amazing. I am going to, so I'm going to, I, I got furious use these notes. I got I'm furiously taking notes here. Wonderful. I got to translate these or whatever and get them into a, a, a functional in our community. You're a perfect example of somebody that gives back, that gives value, that is constantly trying to shine a light, not on themselves, but on others. Well, and to amplify that, that, that the tide you. raises all boats. Thank you so much for the work you do, Dr. Green. Uh, listen, I, I couldn't do it. I'm just going to keep the love fest going here. I couldn't do it without people who are willing to give their time, but more importantly, their motivation, right? I, you know, people come in here and do lip service. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy my book. <laughs> you'll learn it all in there. No, yeah. but listen, you were super genuine. Thank you. I think, I think you're clearly, you know, the energy, you know, talk about energy and energetics. Now, I mean, you're bringing it. Thank you. But most importantly, it's very relatable. And, and that's really the whole goal of what we're doing here. So, we yeah, we I'm, I'm going to get you at the Academy. Um, Steve Green, this is the Make the Read podcast. Natan Verhofsky. Am I saying it right? Verkovsky. You did yeah. work it. Pretty close enough. Uh, thank you one last time. Hey, this is all about giving you actions to help accelerate your journey to success wherever you are. Eighth grade, 12th grade, high school, bachelor's, master's, PhD, and use his uh, Natan's <laughs> metaphor. But wherever you are, you can always go up and there's always going to yeah. be somebody behind you. You can learn from everybody. So take these lessons home. We will see you on the next episode. If you're interested in being a guest on the podcast, put your stuff in the comments. And most importantly, and this is the only way I ask to ever be thanked with this, is share this. I honestly believe the more people that get this information, the more people that can hear this, even just five minutes, and it impacts them in a positive way, that's where my reward. So I appreciate everybody that does that. Thank you. We will get with you next time. And thanks again. You've been listening to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. For more resources and support, please visit makethegrade.net.